Hi, I'm Tammy Oler from MPB, and I'm excited to be joined by the winners of MPB's Shoot the Sequel, Then and Now America Commission that we developed in partnership with 1854 Media, the British Journal of Photography. I'm pleased to introduce two awesome photographers today, Miami-based Anna Samolova, who produced a really vivid portrait of the Florida coast as part of this commission, and also Washington-based photographer Garrett Grove, who uh, re-explored the Cascade Mountain region in Washington and Oregon as part of this commission. Both of you had produced work from these regions before, so I'm really interested in finding out what drew you back to these places and what did you discover by re-engaging with them through this commission? Like a lot of people, I had spent the last year, especially cooped up inside the house and, and it was the end of a pretty traumatic and uh, transitional four years in America. And uh, I hadn't been back to some of these areas since 2015, 2016, you know, Obama was leaving office and the word Trump started becoming a bit more familiar in our vocabulary. And there was a big curiosity to go back and see just like kind of gut check how it felt to be back out there again um, after what felt like longer than four years and have conversations with people and just kind of get my feet on the ground and uh, yeah, just kind of see what resulted really. It was, it was very much a personal experiment just to go back there. Yeah. How about you, Anna? Um, I was um, finishing work on my next um, body of work and book called Floridas. And so um, this came out of many, many trips around Florida while I was working on, on this other book, um, Flood Zone, that just came out in 2019, which feels like just last month, but it's now what two years ago it's all a blur uh, and I was missing this critical last location which is the Florida Panhandle so the northernmost uh, point in Florida um, sort of where it borders with Alabama and um, Georgia uh, and so the commission came in at this absolutely perfect timing because now I'm about to travel to, to Germany to finish the work on on the book. So the images will be included in the book. Oh, that's so exciting. Um, we're really, we're really proud and thrilled and moved by the work that you both produce. I mean, from here at MPB, we believe there's this world of creative potential inside of every piece of used photo and video kit. We're the world's largest platform specializing it. So we see it every day. We see people, very different photographers who produce really wildly different you know, pieces of work using the same piece of kit throughout the course of its life. Um, and our goal with this commission was really to bring that to life within a larger cultural and creative context, um, as well as to be able to provide you with access to this vast range of used kits so that you'd have, you know, the freedom and flexibility to produce your work. Um, and it's really amazing that the two bodies of work that you produced in these opposite corners of the US explore some enduring narratives about American history, American cultural history, identity in two regions that are really always oversimplified. Um, and so I'm really curious, what, what do you hope people will take away from the work that you've done with this commission, given that you've been in these kind of liminal spaces in America? Well, I, I felt, I moved to Florida in 2016 and I've always felt a bit of a, like a bit of an insider outsider uh, so I think that's a, that's, a, that's quite a valuable perspective. It gives you a bit of that detachment. And Florida, of course, you know, is the subject of many jokes, so the Florida man. And I think it's, it's uh, one of the most misunderstood places. And I really wanted to show its complexity um, without really diminishing all its kitsch as well. You know, it's extremely <laughs> expressive place. I live in Miami, my studio is, is in Miami Beach. Of course, it's as vivid as my um, colors and my photographs attempt to, to portray it. You know, it's, it's more than that. Uh, but then all these um, different regions in Florida are so um, distinct. And I wanted to show that you could really um, like splice it into three, four states easily that will have very little in common 
besides the, the heat, perhaps. It was a road trip for you, right? Yeah. And it was also a road trip for you as well, Garrett, right? It was, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and what are you hoping people will take away from your work? Um, the nuances, you know, I hope there's, there's definitely um, some humor in there and the, some of Florida's iconic, uh, you know, palettes, but also it's darkness and uh, it, sometimes bordering on like gothic uh, darkness of the swampland, you know, and, and so I wanted to show all those contrasts, you know, the sort of dichotomies that Florida abounds with. Uh, so I hope that, that the audience will take away that it's it's not as simple as you know it's it's portrayed to be. Yeah, absolutely. How about you, Garrett? I really wanted to go out and kind of just humanize the what I think was like has it been a very like politicized group of people, um, and hopefully build some compassion and 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 bring some questioning into people's own, own minds on how they might view a certain area or person or way of life. Um, and so, yeah, by going out there, my main goal is just to go out and have conversations. And, and so the end result was hopefully pictures that make you just kind of look with a little bit more uh, curiosity at the subject. And also I think it brings some complexity as well with you know, the financial situations and, this, and the uh, political situation and jobs and the economy. It, I mean, we're in such an interesting time in America and I think rural and urban America actually have a lot of similar issues going on with the dividing of the classes and uh, financial well-being. Um, so yeah, I think I just wanted to go out there and and uh, see if I could put it all together. I don't know if I did, but yeah. I mean, one thing that really is interesting when you look at the work that you two have produced in you, in you and you look at them side by side or you take them in one after the other really becomes clear how framing matters, especially when you're sort of actively engaging with um, this idea of Americanness or regionalness or local identity and, um, uh, you know, the choice of shooting in black and white or color or what, uh, what, for, what, what kind of equipment to use or whatnot. And then the choice of how you engage with your inspirations. I mean, I was very very interested to see. I mean, as part of this commission, we were really actually hoping that that you would potentially engage with uh, with the way that America has been portrayed by previous generations of photographers. And those resonances really come through, I think, in the work. Um, I think there's a shared mutual interest in Walker Evans among your two bodies of work, which I find is really interesting. Um, um, I'm just hoping, uh, I was wondering if you two could comment on that as well as what other inspirations you might have been drawing from or speaking back to. I think that would be great. Um, Garrett, if you could take this one to start. Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, it's hard to escape, yeah, Walker Evans, and then also the work that was made around the FSA time and the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl. And um, I mean, I've, I've been obsessed with that work for ever since I started making photographs. But now that we're in this time in America, it, it kind of feels like we're in the next hard time. And so to look at those and have, and kind of maybe have a little bit more understanding and so it doesn't feel as distant in a way because of the difficulties that our country is actually going through. Um, so yeah, they're always running through the back of my head, these images that they're almost, they're just kind of implanted in my subconscious at this point. Um, and I don't want to go and recreate any of them, but uh, certainly they influence what I see and, and the photographs I make. Do you feel similarly, Anna? Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, I took Evans as a structure for, for this Florida's project. Um, in fact, he photographed in Florida over 40, four decades. Um, and then it's, it's sort of his least known work. Uh, yeah, yeah. So he's known for the, the Great Depression images, even of course, all the iconic uh, ones. 
and then uh, there are some very direct references to him that there's like a car junkyard that is an obvious homage uh, but other than that there were similarities there sort of to begin with um, in terms of like you said Tammy framing you know mine most of my images have walls um, mm -hmm. and I sort of think like a like a painter <laughs> and an architect before I'm self-taught in photography so I started out as an architect so yeah. I see things in that way yeah and uh, on this trip actually because of your kit I discovered 50 millimeter and I remember yeah. <laughs> making that <laughs> yeah, conscious decision a while ago it must have been at least 10 years without that lens that I, <laughs> I decided on the telephoto and then there was like wide angle for some extreme situations but most of the time it's telephoto and again you know with Walker Evans a lot of his images are every and again zoomed in um well and then and 50 millimeter made it a lot easier of course <laughs> to to um to frame what I wanted especially on this really intense road trip so mine was uh, 1500 miles uh for for the loop that I made yeah, it was, it was pretty long, you know, and I had to be driving and shooting all the time. <laughs> so 50 millimeter made this job a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> how, much, how far did you drive, Garrett? Uh, I think it ended up, yeah, it was uh, 2,700 miles, somewhere around there. It's a long, long drive too. It was just driving and shooting mostly? Yep, yep, just bouncing around, just look, you know, I would say I'm sure you had a similar experience where you know, you just go through all these areas you've never been and you just kind of get the gut feeling like, oh, I should, this place has something going on. I don't know what it is. And you, you just never know if you're going to spend an hour there or th two or three days. And 100%, you just. A hundred percent. Because it's never, you know, like you can only map out so much. And I learned it sort of the hard way because of the, all the cancellations I had to make. So eventually yeah. I saw in booking my motels uh, in advance, oh, like sure. I go day by day, and thankfully, you know, thanks to technology, you just book it most of the time. You know, sometimes I had to like navigate to a spot where I could get reception. I'd actually like have my night stay that day. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, you discover things along on the road that keep you there way longer than than you expected. And and the best shots are, in my case, um, from the not from my main locations, but the sort of the in betweens. Yeah. Is, do you kind of do a similar thing where you'll maybe figure out like four or five key points on a, on a loop or a drive and then you leave maybe some time in between like a day or three days and yeah and just kind of like go with like I don't know I'll, I'll come to like a turn like to a T and I'll just kind of like do I go left or right you know, I get totally lost essentially and then eventually find my way back to the next town that I want to go to or have a motel booked or yeah yeah absolutely and there's so many unpredictable things i mean you're on that coast that's considered rainy but florida being the sunny state is is a total lie it's it, there are more rainy days here yeah. than oregon actually but that's that's the fact that's omitted from all the tourist brochures but it rains hard you know and, and on the first day i drove it was it was perfect but then the two days in a row it was just rain like a wall oh, wow every day so I made I think one photo that in the two-day period yeah I just had sunshine in my mind for your whole trip not the case <laughs> this is a hashtag real talk about shooting in Florida right now right. <laughs> did you find uh you were doing this really during um I mean it was earlier this year, but still a lot of uncertainty around what was going to happen with vaccines and the pandemic. And, you know, how did you navigate all of that being a photographer, being photographers who wanted to be able to capture images of people? Yeah, I, I was certainly nervous. It took me probably four days to finally take a picture of a person because <laughs> I just didn't know how to approach people and be respectful and mindful of what was going on. And what actually broke the ice was somebody approaching me and wanting to find out what the hell I was doing in their little town with a camera on a tripod. And once I had a conversation that was really beautiful for like an hour, it just, it kind of invigorated me in the process of approaching. And I mean, there were all the conversations were outside. I went into a few houses with, you know, like a mask on, um, but 
for the most part, it felt just as safe as any risk I was making back at home. Um, it just happened to be that I wasn't in my hometown. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of, you know, ordering meals to go out, eating outside by myself. And um, yeah, overall, it actually felt pretty, pretty safe and manageable. Yeah. How was it in Florida? And I'm in Florida. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The further, the deeper into Florida I went, the fewer masks could be seen, you know, so at some point, the beauty of that 50, even 50 millimeter, it gives you enough distance to where you are a good six feet away. From. And interestingly, you know, there are a couple portraits there that I included. Um, there's one of a woman, um, I think she said in her 80s, and she's got this hairdo and she's got this like very slender, tall denim um, overall outfit anyway. So I noticed her for other reasons than her mask, but she actually put on her mask um, when she saw me, she's like, you can take a photo of me, but only in my mask. And it's it's a Trump mask that where um, 2020 was, was cleared up and then 2024 was hand painted. And then there's another, you know, another shot of a, of a, of a woman literally just down the street who was wearing a mask and I was drawn to her also outfit you know it's a very small town in Florida and um, quite eccentric interesting people um, in such in like overall it's it's just uh, antique stores you know and like farm equipment um, and then suddenly it was like vibrantly dressed people and of course I was interested um so she had this crazy boots and she was wearing a mask but she had to remove the mask and she like runs this alternative radio station and, and the portraits had taken maybe like 20 minutes apart from each other so it's these kinds of these kinds of contrasts in terms of in terms of people um one really crazy decision I made uh, was to attend a county fair. I've never been to one in Florida. And so this is central Florida and I turn up and it's like, you know, hogs and sheep and it's thousands of people. Nobody's wearing, you know, or if, you, if they're wearing a mask, it's like somewhere else oh. as an accessory. So that's where I was wearing one um, and it, it was, so bizarre, but also uh, it made me really understand this place a lot better. You know, these are some very insular communities that are incredibly um, vibrant and, and densely populated at, during those events, even though most of the time it feels like you're just driving through some like, empty farmland with just cattle. Um, but then suddenly County Fair just brought like thousands of people together. Yeah, that's awesome. I, it's really interesting that you talk about the lens being able to like control sort of the distance you have from the subjects that you are photographing during this time period. It's a great segue into actually talking about photography kit. Thank you very much. We wouldn't be MPB if we didn't ask you about that. So, so let me let me just ask you a little bit more about your lenses, um, Anna, because you borrowed some glass from us for this project. So tell me a little bit about where you had been with the lenses you've been using and, and, you know, how you explored and, and, and made some of these decisions about focal length and what you were doing with your work um, with this particular commission. Um, long story. So starting with Walker Evans again and how his images are usually very still, you know, and kind of somber and there's very little drama and action. And I wondered is, if that's also because he uses, um, he used uh, talking like his neighbor, but I brought his book. That was the one book that I brought with me on the trip. I had Paul Kevin's book. Um, is uh, that he uses prime lenses, and and so do I. So I make it difficult for myself. I'm always switching lenses, and I have my 35. I had my 85. One 20. I don't remember what it is. Like one. Oh, five, something like that. Longer, and then thankfully 50 millimeter, with which I ended up working most of the time <laughs> that I borrowed from you. Uh, and so that's the one where there were some areas where it was just plain unsafe for me to get out of the car. Yeah. Where, but I could be close enough, you know, I could pull up close enough with my 50 millimeter and still get the shot, you know, I'm like driving through Confederate flag territory. And there, are, there were some instances where I had to like, hop into the car really fast and drive off 
and yeah yeah it's not always it's not always super safe but the length of the lens allows you for enough distance to, sure yeah to move on you loved that lens i think right you i believe you ended up buying that lens from it's us <laughs> Which was like, we were so excited about that. We were like, yeah, so excited about so home. Here. I can do all these environmental portraits now and I don't have to struggle all the time. It's a lot of footwork with 85 or 35. That's awesome. Garrett, uh, tell us what you were shooting with. Um, I know we provided you with two Nikon tilt chip lenses. And I also think it was a Ricoh GR2 and a Fujifilm X100F. So you actually had a lot of potential setups for this work, didn't you? Tell us about how you approached your setups and what you ended up using. Yeah, I kind of wanted to bring two cameras that were just quick, like in my pocket. Um, like sometimes if I'm just driving, I can just pull it out and just snap a shot. That's where I've used that Rico for many years. I've gone through two of them now. And so I figured I should get another one as a backup because I figured my other one was about to die. <laughs> um, and then most of the time I shoot, yeah, with 35 millimeter lens, pretty much hundred percent of the time. And sometimes I'll use a 50, but I end up focusing a lot on structures as well. But with a 35, if you're not high enough or you're too low, you know, it just distorts the angles. And so I just thought it'd be interesting to have that capability to straighten the lines. And, and so basically, I didn't actually use the Rico at all. I didn't use the Fuji. Uh, I just shot with that 35 millimeter and then the 24 tilt shift. And that's what I made the work with. And the 24 tilt shift was really nice just because you know, in some of these smaller towns, the streets are narrow. And so if you have a 35, you can't get the whole building or it makes the lines off. And so it was nice to have that 24 so you could actually get the whole structure in and tilt and shift it so that the lines are, are vertical. Um, so I'll probably actually end up getting that lens as well at some point. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's what it's all about, having the opportunity yeah, to be great. To to, to, to take creative leaps, really. Yeah, yeah, and it's nice that it, it can mirror the abilities of like a four by five or a large format camera with, with how it can manipulate the scene in front of it. That's really great. Uh, yeah. Were there any surprises along the way on this trip, either you know gear related or otherwise? Was there anything that just made you say, I was not expecting that? Not too much, no, I think, I think it kind of, I mean, if anything, it went smoother and better than I expected. Yeah, I don't, there wasn't any big, big hiccups at all. For me, I was, I have a truck and a little camper. And um, so the biggest surprises for me were just where I ended up staying every four or five days to take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> and where I found a laundromat after a couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, that was kind of the biggest question marks I had. Yeah. How about you, Anna? Any big surprises? Um, yeah, every day there were small ones. Um, my, I think my biggest one, uh, well, I don't know if it's a surprise. I, I didn't really expect um, certain areas of the panhandle um, to be so not restored after a recent, not that recent hurricane, Florida. Mm -hmm is very prone and where I am I mean it's been four years here and three hurricanes that I've been through uh, which I consider minor now even though there were category like the same category that would hit the panhandle but there are two towns um, and, and I included um, two images uh, there's Mexico uh, Mexico City Beach um, yeah and there's uh, Panama no there's Mexico Beach and Panama City Beach um, that were quite devastated in 2018 and have barely restored. So that was surprising. I wasn't really expected that. It's a bit of a ghost town, Mexico Beach. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, one final question for you both I have. Of course, I have to ask this question, which is what did this work end up meaning to you? How did it impact you? And what do you think you'll take forward into future projects? This was critical for me because you know, with this new body of work, Florida's and sort of claiming to um, to have gotten to know the state, I, I really 
couldn't do that without the panhandle, without the North. So that was the, the critical final chapter that is now, you know, at least 11 images I think are included from this commission are included in my, in my book and upcoming shows are already lining up with that. So um, I, I really have now, I think a complete picture, of course it's subjective, you know, and the, the work doesn't claim any objectivity whatsoever. It's, it's just a personal point of view. Um, but it's, it's a, definitely like a love-hate relationship with Florida, <laughs> but I do feel like I know it a lot better and I can love-hate it deeper, you know, <laughs> after that. And I think <laughs> any creative person has to be in some sort of resistance to maybe the place yeah. they live in. How about you, Garrett? Impacts, what you'll take forward? Um, yeah, I mean, I love making the work. I mean, just, just the pleasure of going out and, and making the photographs was just uh, encouraging after a year of, you know, I was making pictures this last year, but not too many pictures of people and not very far from where I was living. And so, yeah, it was just really nice to be reminded that most people are really great and kind and have good intentions and um, not to form your worldview too much from screens and headlines and what you intake uh, um, by reading essentially and just yeah just the value of going out and, and having a hands-on experience and that's really where where um, you can find creativity and connection and uh, yeah so it just made me want to go out more. And that's where I am now. You know, I'm down in California. I'm about to drive the coastline for the next two or three weeks and hopefully finish a project that I started in 2017, driving from Mexico to Canada. Um, and uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Well, congratulations. It sounds like you both have such interesting next chapters actually coming up. Um, um, congratulations to you both for being awarded the commission. Um, we are again so thrilled and excited about this work and I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today. Um, best of luck in these new ventures. Um, we can't wait to see what you'll produce next. Um, and then for everybody out there watching this video, you can find both Anna and Garrett's work online and on the Instagram. They're out there. So follow them to find out all the exciting things they're doing next. Um, and please make sure to follow MPB. We're at mpb.com on the Instagram. Thank you both so much for joining me today. Yeah, thank, thank you. you.